The commonly used sampling approaches to avoid the bias are random sampling, stratified random sampling, systematic random sampling, and subgroup sampling. Let us see one by one. Before I talk about the sampling approaches, let us see when to use which approach. A uh, sampling approach of random sampling and stratified random sampling is usually used for uh, generating a sample from a population. Systematic sampling is usually used for population as well as process. And subgroup sampling is uh, for uh, a process, especially if, if you are manufacturing something in bulk or you are processing some items in bulk, then in that case you will be using the subgroup sampling. Selecting a random sample, how would you do that? Many times we think that a selecting a random sample from a list uh, without the aid of statistical techniques is the right technique, but it's better to use the statistical technique like random number generator to choose your sample. Although it looks like a, a very simple technique, but it's a little bit sometimes difficult to execute. When we are trying to choose a sample, don't merely choose whatever items you like from a list of population, but select the items randomly. If you are doing that, then we will say that uh, you are using simple random sampling. Stratified random sampling means you stratify the data based on the categories of a particular X factor which you are trying to study. So, for example, if you are trying to uh, study the productivity in an organization and if you feel that the productivity is affected by the shifts, like morning shift is uh, producing more and the evening shift is producing little less and night shift the productivity is very low. So suppose you suspect the variation of productivity due to the shift, then you can stratify the data. Means you will collect 20 samples from morning, 20 from evening and 20 from night shift. Similarly, if you feel that the cycle time is affected by the location of your office, suppose you have got uh, uh, three offices in three cities and you feel that the cities, the, the, the location is uh, one of the root cause of uh, the higher cycle times. In this case, the factor is the city and you have got different categories of city, uh, city A, city B, city C. So I would use here stratified random sampling means I will stratify my data, my cycle time data as per the city. So I'll collect a few samples from city A, few from B, few from C. So random sampling from the group as a whole would tend to represent a proportional amount of each group, but stratified random sampling ensures it. Stratified random sampling is appropriate when a large group has distinctive subgroups that you want represented in your sample. It also ensures the sample represents each group in the same proportion as the population. So in short, stratified random sampling means randomly sample a proportionate number from each group. Systematic random sampling. Systematic sampling selects items according to a pattern rule. You determine the pattern rule based on your process knowledge and sampling needs. Uh, some population example could be stop every 10th person entering a store and ask, uh, why do you shop here? You ask the 10th patient entering into a hospital uh, about the opinion, about the attitude of the staff of the hospital. A process example could be in a bank, suppose you are trying to estimate the uh, account opening time. So you sample every 10th uh, account opening request received from the customer. Systematic sampling ensures that a sample is representative of a process that may change or shift over a period of time. Now subgroup sampling is usually used when you have got uh, uh, something produced in bulk or you are processing something in bulk. Say, for example, you're producing, let's say, chocolates. So uh, let's say you're producing 10,000 chocolates per hour. So at 8 a.m., you will collect five chocolates. And let's say you are interested in measuring the weight of the chocolates. So you would uh, collect five samples. So here's the subgroup sizes, five. At 8 a.m., you will collect five samples of chocolate, take the average weight of the chocolates, and that would be representative of the weight of that particular hour. At 9 a.m., again, you collect five samples, again, take the average, and again, at uh, you know, 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., you keep on collecting five, five samples. So this is known as subgroup sampling. You are making the judgment about the process based on the subgroup. So you are calculating the average weight of those five chocolates and making a judgment about the performance of the process. So this is known as subgroup sampling. Uh, we will be using X bar R chart later on in the control phase and that time we will require a good understanding of subgroup sampling technique.